Here's an interesting subject I've been wanting to talk about for quite a while. Uh, back in 1990, I had the privilege of uh, being asked to go out to the Wenatchee uh, Clovis cache that was uh, discovered in 1988 in uh, Wenatchee, Washington. Um, and uh, at this cache, they found the largest, at that time, the largest Clovis points ever found. Uh, what you see here are the casts, and if you look closely, you can see there's speckles in there and stuff. Really good job that Pete Bolstrom did of uh, casting these. And uh, these three points are all right around nine inches in length. And if you look on the back side, you notice that there's dirt adhered to them. Well, this is actual Wenatchee dirt that came right from the site. And uh, while I was there, I collected some myself that came right off the sifter. And this is very fine, very fine dirt. As you can see, it just so fine it goes into the grooves of your fingers. So anyway, um, my uh, task out there was to sit in the apple house that was at the uh, orchard where these were found and do flint napping talks and demonstrations all day. I did this for about eight to ten days uh, straight and it was, I think they said that there was somewhere around 10,000 people came through the area in that time period. It was just an amazing time, um, a lot of excitement about these large uh, cache of beautiful big early man points. Get this one here. See, some of the flutes are a little longer than others, but none of them are real, really, really super long. As you see here. Now, not only did they find uh, these large Clovis points, but there were several other uh, bifaces and other Clovis uh, paleo tools, like uh, you know, like a uh, preforms, um, uniface scrapers, things like that. But also, there was a lot of bone rods found. And here is a cast of a bone rod. Now, I don't know how well you can see this, but this was really well done as far as the replication of this. I, I always had a theory that, uh, that these were used uh, as part of the hafting because it looks like it goes right there it's tapered down and you could put a wooden splint on the other side here and tie them on so if you slip this under here and you had your w piece of wood here uh, it would tie it on securely so you had a uh, th these were all made out of uh, mammoth ivory too so you had something that was you know it could be used over and over again I'm sure a tool like this uh, was carried for a long time now, so that was pretty exciting stuff, and uh, and didn't realize at the time how important it really was. But as the years have gone by, I've thought about it quite a lot. Now, recently, uh, this point here has been talked about a lot on Paleo Planet. This is one of the first casts that was made of it. This is the Roots Clovis point, and it was supposedly found somewhere uh, not too far from the Wenatchee site, up on Badger Mountain. There's a lot of stories that go with it. The guy found it. Uh, when he was out plowing, he threw it in his toolbox on his tractor and it rode around in there for a few years. Uh, you can also see there was like some new damage in this area from banging around in there. This is obsidian, this point here, where these were all kind of uh, termed as sagebrush agate. They did find a source of this while they were out there um, that matched up to the stone. So anyway, this big clovis here is quite the topic now. Uh, if you go on Paleo Planet and look up the uh, Roots Clovis, R-U-T-Z, uh, this topic is really hot right now and there's a lot of discussion and the one guy, uh, Stonewacker, um, I met him when I was out there. He was just a kid, young guy. Uh, I actually taught him some flint napping while I was there and he now is probably one of the best flint nappers in, in uh, the West Coast. Um, Cole Hurst uh, is quite a good napper. He can replicate this point, maybe not exactly, but he's got it pretty close. And so if you get a chance to go on Paleo Planet, you'll see that. But these are some things that came from out there. And, uh, you know, they say things are big in Texas, but up in Washington State, they're even bigger. So just wanted to touch on this a little bit. I know that a lot of you have heard of the Wenatchee uh, Clovis Cache. Uh, it, it, it is an amazing thing. I've seen all the pieces in person. Um, the piece that I held, I've got a picture of me here somewhere. I'm trying to think where it is. Oh, here it is. 
this was taken let me grab this as I was being handed uh, this piece that came fresh out of the ground look at the young paleo man there <laughs> back in 1990 what's that uh, uh, 23 years ago whatever it's pretty funny but uh, I've got a carnelian blade in my hands there probably about six seven inches long maybe six and the look on my face is uh, telling the story of, of the wonder of what what there was so anyway just wanted to share this with you guys hope you enjoyed this little um, eyewitness account of what I saw there and uh, again these these were some amazing uh, blades. They came out of the orchard when they were putting in um, irrigation. They had a trenching machine going. Uh, some blades came up on the trencher. They stopped and they dug and they found uh, more of them. And the story, you know, after that, you have to read more about it. So, anyway, thanks for watching and uh, read on about this. It's quite fascinating if you get a chance.